everyone dreams of the tropics. And everyone could have a little bit of the tropics in their home every day. I'm Liz Kean, and this is the Indoor Garden. Today we're going to look at the wonderful tropical world of palms. And I think that I have a palm for just about everybody's taste today. So let's get started. This is Renita Williams. She's a horticulturist with an interior landscape company and she's graciously allowed us to look at one of her very own plants that she's grown herself. So how are you today, Renita? Good. Thank you. And your plant looks good too. Well, thank you. Now this is the ponytail palm, correct? That's correct. It's also, it's called a Brocarnia recrevata. That's right, and although we do call it a palm, the fact is, is it's not a true palm. No, it's not. It's actually closer to a succulent plant. That's correct. As you can tell, if you look closely underneath it, the pot here, it has a bulb and it stores water in there. That's correct. You, um, the plant holds all its water in the bulb. Um, it has a very um, thick root system, which basically runs along the bottom of the pot and it does take up and it stores everything in its bulb. Now it's quite unusual to see a bulb in a plant above the soil, isn't it? That's correct, but this one likes to be, the higher above the soil, the better it is. You'll eliminate rotting and you'll also have um, rooms for offsprings to come out of the bulb. Oh, I see. So if somebody buys one of these and you decide to repot it, make sure you don't cover up that bulb. Anyway, they can grow to be quite attractive and unusual specimens. That's correct. Um, honestly, the smaller the pot with the less soil, the better plants you'll have because you'll have less water capacity to hold. Oh, I see. Now, how long have you had this plant? I've had this for um, one year, and in that year, it's grown from this height here. So I have about a foot of growth in a year. It has wonderful new growth here. It's quite prolific. Thank you. So how do you take care of it? Now where do you keep it as far as light? Well, I keep it in a sun window, in the middle of the window, um, where it gets sun all day long. It's in the south. Um, I give it a quart of water um, when I do water it. This one, it's been watered now three weeks ago. Now is the time to water it. Okay, now how do you decide that it needs water? Well, first I'll fill my topsoil and then I'll see if it's really hard. I'll see if it's pulled away from the pot, which will let you know that it's taking all the moisture out of the soil at that time before I put more back in. Um, you can also feel your bulb, and if the bulb feels quite a little bit soft, you'll feel some movement, you know, some texture into the bulb, mm -hmm. then you can tell that it's ready for water. Uh, so I see, if you look at this, if you can see it a little closely, um, around the edge of the pots here, it's just starting to give away the soil right, from the right. edge of the pot. And the bulb is a little bit soft, you're mm -hmm. right. Yeah, it's been three so, weeks. Yeah, it's definitely ready then. Yep. <laughs> now, do you ever fertilize this guy? Well, in the summertime, I'll fertilize it once a, week, once a month in the summertime. Mm -hmm. In the wintertime, as long as it's actively growing, which are coming out of the top with more new growth, then I will put it on a fertilizing program maybe once every three months. You don't want to over fertilize in the winter time. I see. Now you told me that this is a good plant for people that have children. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> it, it has a very rough leaf edge and they won't bother it. <laughs> they don't pick on this one. And you don't have to fuss with it very often either. No, this is a very low maintenance plant. You water it, you let the water run through to the bottom and that's it. There's no more to do with it besides dusting it. And how do you dust it? When I dust it, I just take the uh, leaf to my fingers and I just you know, pull the dust off like this. Or you can just use a feather duster. Oh, okay. And that's about it? Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. Well, it seems to be doing just fine. Thank you. And I really appreciate you bringing one of your own plants on the show. And I hope you'll come back another time. Sure. And show us another one of yours. Sure. So thanks. Thank you. The Neanthabella palm is botanically known as Chamaderia elegans bella. And I have a couple specimens here for you to look at today. The first one I have is in a six inch pot here. And I think it's really cute. And they're also quite durable. They're really easy to take care of. And if you have one like this in a six inch pot, what you want to do is water it when it's 
dry about a half inch below the soil surface and then give it about a quart of water and it's really as simple as that. They also like some bright light. They don't need a whole lot of sun but some bright light would be great for them. Now I also have a specimen here in a 10 inch pot and this one if you want to water it correctly let it dry out just about an inch below the soil surface. You can let it dry out a little further down than the six inch plant and you can give it up to two quarts of water and that should be perfectly fine. A really interesting thing that the Neanthabella palms do for you sometimes is they fruit. Now they never actually get flowers but they do fruit and I think it's quite an unusual thing to see. And this particular palm actually has some on it as you can see right over here. And as you can see, it is quite unique looking, and it's got all its little seeds sitting on the little branch there. So if you see something like that on your palm, you'll know that it's fruit and that it's fine to leave it there. And I see that I also have a piece of fruit right here. It's just starting to come out. I think it's really interesting. The Neanthabella palms are one of the easiest palms that you can grow. They may get up to five feet tall and they are quite easy so you may actually see them become five feet tall if you take care of them. They're wonderful plants that are natives of the rainforest in South America and also in Mexico. They've been with us for years and years as house plants and I think they are just great but occasionally they do have mite problems. That's pretty common for palms and I'm gonna show you one in just a second that has that problem. Occasionally palms do get mites, spider mites that is. They're an insect that seems to come out of nowhere and can really wreak havoc with your palm. It can also get on other house plants, but I brought this Neanthabella palm for you to see because it has mites on it right now and you can really see the damage that they do. This poor plant has really had a battle with them and you can see if you look at the fronds closely how it looks like the juice is being sucked right out of the plant and that's exactly what is happening. And you can also see the mites themselves. They're very tiny, but we'll see if we can get a good look at them. They're, they usually sit right under a leaf or a frond. And they, like I said, they are very tiny, like little white specks. And occasionally you can see them moving around. Now, if you don't catch them right away, they'll eventually spin webs on the plant. And you'll really know you have a problem then. So although this may come up occasionally, it is a problem that's easy to take care of. What you want to do is get some insecticidal soap and spray the plant, just like it says on the instructions, really thoroughly, especially the undersides of the leaves and the tops too. You want to give the plant just a really thorough soak and then you repeat that um, about a week apart for two or three times and that should take care of your problem. If you get after them, your plant will be thriving again in no time at all. The stately Cantia palm has been a house plant favorite for years and years. Even as far back as Victorian times, the Cantia palm was the plant of choice for many homes. And that's because it's so sturdy and so beautiful and elegant, as you can see. I brought with me today a particularly large specimen. It's in a 14-inch pot, although you can find them in varying sizes. But I wanted you to see how wonderful they can really get. Now, if you decide to get one of these, the care on them is really quite simple. And I'll show you what to do. First, you want to check the soil every week or so and s let it dry out about a half inch below the soil surface. Just check in a couple places and that should really do it. And as far as the light goes, these plants are quite tolerant of low light. They're often used in corners of a room and they do quite well for years that way. They're even happier to be in some bright indirect light or a little bit of morning sun. But if you've got the right spot for them, they'll live in your home or office for years and years. 
One other really nice thing to do for them, and you can really do this with any palm you have, and in fact just about any house plant appreciates this, is go ahead and dust it. Dust off the um, fronds every once in a while, probably about once a month or maybe as often as every few weeks, but they sure do appreciate that. So with a little bit of attention and care, a plant like this could live with you for years and years. This is Pete Fordresher. He's a college student who manages to find some time to grow some plants in his dorm. So how are you doing today, Pete? I'm doing quite well. Good. Now what do you have for me today? Um, this is a Eureka palm that I've had for a few months now that um, it's seen some wear and tear. Obviously the uh, college lifestyle might be not be the most conducive to plant growing and you can see because it's got some brown spots and I thought I'd come to you for a little bit of assistance on that ground. Okay. Well actually it's doing quite well. Um, the Eureka palm can be a difficult plant to grow mm -hmm. so I think you know, considering everything, it's doing quite well, and I'll show you a few things to get it even more back on track and thriving. So good. the first thing that I notice about it is it is tending to tilt backwards yeah, like a little way. bit. The and leaning I, Tower of Pisa or something. Right, like it is like that. <laughs> and I think the reason is if we come down here to the soil level, you can mm. see that the soil is pretty low in the pot. And if I press on it, I can really get it to uh, oh, yes. press down quite a bit. So what I would do is add some more potting soil to mm -hmm. it and pat it down really firmly and then I think it'll stand up straight and mm -hmm. it'll be a little bit happier too. I see. While we're down here, I notice that the soil's nice and moist. It feels good. Now you want to water it when the top of the soil's dry, however long that takes. And you can water it with up to a half gallon of water. I think that might have been a problem at first. At first I was just using a, a cup and pouring it in there and it was getting quite brown when I first got it. And then I started <laughs> watering it more and it seemed to be much healthier after that. Yeah, yeah that, that'll make a big difference. Yeah, a cup of water just really wouldn't make it with this time. <laughs> That's a mighty <laughs> so good one. So let's look at it a little closer. I do see it does have some brown tipping on it like this and that probably is a result of your underwatering it when you first mm. had it. Now one thing you can do for it right now is just take a scissors and just snip the ends off just like this and that'll make it look a little bit nicer. Mm -hmm. Now what kind of light do you keep it in? Well, um, the room I'm in faces to the west and uh, it doesn't get a great amount of light because it is a townhouse on a fairly busy street but um, we have three windows in the front in a kind of a dormer shape so that that lets it get some light in there and I had it there for a while but I also had it downstairs for a while which doesn't get as much light so I think I'm going to move it back upstairs yeah, this particular palm the Eureka palm does like some good bright light mm -hmm. they don't have to have a lot of direct sun but bright light will make a tremendous difference mm -hmm. I noticed that it leans towards the light if I keep it against the wall for a good period of time. Uh-huh. Yeah. Might be why <laughs> That's it's what leaning. They'll do, yeah. yeah. It wants that light. Mm -hmm. It really does. I also noticed something else here. Let me see. See its new growth here? Mm -hmm. Now just hold that right down here for me. I want to get one of its older fronds. Now look oh, yeah. at its older frond over here. Now that is actually much greener here than your new frond here. Mm -hmm which tells me that you probably aren't fertilizing the plant. Is that oh, correct? Yes, I'm sorry, that is correct. <laughs> well, that's okay, you can start now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's always time to start. My favorite way to fertilize is to use a fertilizer that you mix up every time you water a plant. Mm -hmm. It's just an easy habit to get into, and the plants seem to respond the best to that, too. Mm -hmm. So do you think you can develop that habit? Possible. Um, would I find a fertilizer in pretty much any at a store, nursery or yeah. garden center, okay. even the hardware stores mm -hmm. often carry them and they should be able to give you a good recommendation. There are several out there that are very good and that you can use every time. Okay. Now when you say mix up, you mean do you get something that mixes up with water or is that? Right, um, it's all water okay. soluble. Mm -hmm. It'll either be a powder form or a liquid form. Okay. There are different kinds. Is there a special kind for a, a palm that I might want to use or another kind that would hurt it if I used it? 
I would just use a general house plant food. Mm -hmm. There's not one, at least not that I know of, designed specifically for palms, but just a good general house plant food should be perfect. Great. So you think you can do all that? I'll give it a shot. I'll see if I can fit it in. Okay, will you let me know how it does in a yeah. couple months? I'll let you know. Okay, well thanks a lot, Pete. Thank you very much. <laughs> This is the fishtail plant. Now, if it's not really obvious to you right away why it's called a fishtail plant, then take a little closer look at its leaves, like these, for example, and just imagine them on the back of a fish. I think you can see why now that it's called a fishtail plant. Now, you don't see this plant all that often, but it is quite an unusual looking palm and really rather magnificent. And it's not all that hard to take care of either. If you do decide this is the kind of plant you would like, you want to give it some good bright light. Full morning sun would be great. Full afternoon sun would probably be a little bit too strong. So you just want to make sure that you've got it in some good bright light with perhaps a little bit of sun. And when you go to water it, make sure that the top is dry, only the soil surface. Feel in a couple different places and when it feels dry, give it a thorough soak. Now this particular plant will take up to two quarts of water. And when I look at this plant, I do, it just strikes me as a more masculine plant. While it's not really a male or female plant, I could see that if you need a good gift for a man, I think this could make a striking addition to someone's office or den or living room even. This very regal looking plant is known as the majesty palm and it grows to be quite tall. It's a wonderful plant if you have a space in your home or office which is fairly narrow and you'd like some height but don't have a lot of width. It has gorgeous deep green fronds and as you can see it does likes to continue growing taller and taller. We've got this one frond right here that'll start unfurling pretty soon. All these wonderful green fronds emanate from this sturdy and very handsome looking trunk down below. And the sturdiness is exactly the kind of plant this is. If you want a palm, this is a really good choice. All you need to do to care for it is to water it when it's dry about a half inch below the soil surface and then give it a thorough soak after it dries out that much. And this will tolerate low light quite well too, although it would be perfectly happy with a little bit of direct sun or just some good bright indirect light. But it is quite majestic as its name says and I think it would be a wonderful plant for any home or office. This is Elizabeth Troncoso. She's a fan of the show and she decided to get some advice in person on a new plant that she just bought. So how are you today, Elizabeth? Fine, thank you, Liz. Glad to be here. Well, it's nice to have you here. Thank you. So you just got this new palm. Yes. I uh, watch your show all the time and I love to be educated and, and entertained at the same time. And I thought now that I have this new palm, I would bring it in so I could get some good helpful hints from you. Oh, well, great. Thank well, I'd be you. glad to give you some helpful hints. I like to see plants grow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you know what you have here? I know it's Italian from the name, but I, I don't <laughs> know much, much more than that. Okay, it's called a Phoenix Robolini, also known as a pygmy date palm. And, you know, it can live for years and years if you take good care of it in your home. Wonderful. Now, it does like as far as the light goes, a good bright spot in your house. Not a lot of direct sun, but good bright light. So do you have a place like that for it? I have a western exposure for my plants and uh, I'm glad you're telling me because I didn't know whether uh, the sun was going to be too bright in that window or not. Well, full afternoon sun directly on it would be a little bit too much. So if you keep it a few feet away from there, it should do really well. Great. I have a lot of plants that will be glad to have another friend next to them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Now I'm noticing here that you that some of the roots are exposed. Can you see that? Yes, I can. So what I'm going to advise you to do is to add a little bit of extra potting soil. There's some large roots here that you can see as well as some little hair roots 
and I think the plant would be a little better off if it had just a little more potting soil. And you want to pot it to just about here, right where those roots end. Is this part of the roots right here, these big bulbs that are coming out? No, now this is actually its trunk. So that you don't want to cover up. You'll smother the plant if oh, you do okay. that. Okay. So just cover up these roots that are showing. And also when you water it, all you have to do, it's really simple, is just feel the top of the soil. Just feel in a few places and it should be quite dry. Right now it's pretty moist so you probably won't have to worry about it for a week or so. Good. And then when you do water it, I see it's in a 10 inch pot you can give it up to two quarts of water. That'll give it a good full soak. Wonderful. Now, is this pot okay for this type of plant or a, a clay pot might be better? What would you recommend? Um, this pot's absolutely fine for it. It's not an especially attractive pot. That's correct. <laughs> you may want to cover it up with a basket or another kind of decorative container. Okay. If you do like terracotta or clay, mm -hmm. it could be potted directly into that and that would be fine too. It's really a personal preference. The one thing to note about clay is that plants will dry out a lot faster because the clay breathes. So if you tend to forget about your plants, keeping it in plastic may be a little bit better. Wonderful. Then I might just do that. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Now you also want to mist it occasionally. They do like a little extra um, humidity, it's not absolutely crucial, but it's a really nice thing to do for the plant. Great. That's, we all like a little spray now and then, so that would be <laughs> nice. Thank you. And one thing to watch out mm -hmm. for, mites can get on palms. Now I'm checking this one out here, and it seems to be very clean. I don't see any bugs on it at all. Now what you'll see, if it does have mites, are little white specks, and they'll kind of cluster around the center of the leaf. And then eventually, you'll see webbing all throughout the leaf if you let it go too long. Okay, now if uh, that happens, how would I treat the mites? You can use either safer soap that you can buy just about anywhere, or use some ivory soap mixed in water in a spray bottle and just soak the plant with it. And then a few days later, rinse it off, either outside or in your bathtub. Oh, great. They're really easy to get rid of, but you got to got to get after them. Be persistent, yes. <laughs> now I have cats at home. Will any of this affect my cats? Uh, I don't want to hurt them. I know not to bring in toxic plants. Is this something I have to worry about? No, this is not a toxic plant. Great. Now it may tempt your cats. I know they do like plants that look a little bit grassy like this and sometimes they might bite on the ends. Yes. <laughs> so it actually may be more of a problem for the plant than the cats, but uh, I think that'll be all right. Great. Thank you, Liz. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, and good luck growing your plant. I'm sure thank it'll you. do fine. Well, I need the luck. Thank you very much. I and appreciate it. thanks for that. coming on the show. Thank you. <laughs> Chinese fan palm can really add a striking dimension to your home or office and they really are quite readily available. If you don't find one at your nursery or garden center, ask them to order one for you. They should be able to get you one and they are truly magnificent. Now if you'd like something like this for your home or for your office, it's really not as fragile looking as it may at first appear. They do like to stay on the moist side, so you would water them when they're dry just below the soil surface, just slightly below. Give them a good soak and be sure to fertilize them occasionally too. And like most palms, they do like good bright light, but not full direct sun. Now I want you to look a little closer. I'll show you one of these fronds. They are so magnificent, as you can see, and they are definitely fan-shaped, just like their name. And another interesting thing to note about this plant is that you, what you can see happening here is natural protection. Look at all those little thorns that are growing up on its stems. That is really amazing. And that is one way plants keep animals away from them. It's just a survival technique that they've learned through the ages. Today we've been able to see some really wonderful plants from the tropics. The beautiful palms can be grown by just about anyone. And you've seen a few people today who've done it. You too can bring a little bit of paradise into your home. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.